dear friends welcome to infos welcome to another video from oil and gas training this is our uh, uh, valves part 13 in this video we are discussing about uh, some more information on uh, valves uh, construction details and specification design and other application area subject is uh, valve sizing welcome to this video introduction to valve sizing generally valve sizing is based on the standard thermodynamic laws of fluid the application of these laws is affected by the particular function of the valve plus the type of severity of the service simple on off block valves are expected to pass nearly 100% that is the important of a valve sizing 100% with the minimum pressure drop 100% flow should be taking place so flow without a significant pressure drop since they are not expected to control the flow other than to shut off so this is the simple principle and practically maybe not possible let us see that on the other hand throttling services are expected to produce a certain amount of uh, uh, flow at a certain positions of opening and take a particular pressure drop not like that one in the case of uh, throttling valves it is expected to produce certain amount of flow at a certain positions of opening and take a particular pressure drop we have already studied that one control valve and isolation valve or on off valve differences or manual valve differences Therefore, the science of valve sizing is almost always directed to, towards sizing of a throttling valve. So, that is important. So, sizing of a valve means mainly it is specific, specifying, it is a discussion on or study of throttling valves. Even though valve sizing manual, uh, valve sizing criteria of manual valves are discussing some information available on that one let us see that what are the what is the information what are the information available on that one the basic function of manual on off block walls is quite simple to pass full flow while the valve is open or to shut off or divert the flow when closed so that is the main basic function fully open at the full full pass maximum 100% pass on fully open or uh, to shut off or divert when it is fully closed therefore the valve size can sometime to be uh, determined simply by size of the piping which has already been sized by the system engineers so piping size is equivalent to or design is possible the valve size can equal to pipe size Manual valve manufacturers often provide sizing chart that indicate the relationship between the flow rate requirement or the minimum and maximum valve size that can pass given the given flow rate. So that also valve manufacturers are giving that one schedule. An important choice of uh, choice in manual valve sizing is whether the valve should be full bore or reduced bore. You can see from here the picture which is giving that one full bore. So equivalent to the pipe diameter you can see that one the valve sizing. But in the reduced bore see the pipe sizing is reducing and the valve sizing is slightly uh, lower than or lesser than the uh, full bore size. So that two uh, ideal conditions are there selection of a valve a manual valve for a particular application in many cases this is more a function of the valve's purpose to pass full flow or to take a slight pressure drop if the valve is installed in an application that must allow the passage of a pig pig is using for a cleaning system uh, internal cleaning of a pipeline to clean or score the pipeline the valve chosen must be full bore since the pig is the same size of the inside diameter of the pipe 
So some condition full bore valve is better than reduced bore. Let us see that. Another application calling for full bore manual valve is one installed in slurries and services with entrained material and particulates. If the valve has a reduced bore, these particulates of slurries have a tendency to settle and become trapped uh, at the narrowed construction. Yeah, that is a spelling mistake is there. <coughs> A uh, valve sizing criteria of manual valve is continuing. A full bore valve has no such restriction, allowing for free passage of the foreign material with the collection. So, that is the advantage of a full bore valve. Full bore manual valves are also chosen for services with high velocities, for which a restriction would increase of the chance of erosion as well as increase of velocity further. That is also one advantage. So, another criteria, valve sizing criteria for check valves, some information is available. Let us discuss that one. The most critical element of check valve sizing is that a significant, a sufficient pressure drop and a minimum flow exists for the check valve to open. Without a pressure drop, the closure element will not open and the valve will remain closed, which is what happens when a pump fails to maintain a proper flow or flow reserves? The minimum pressure drop required to for check valves is open is typically 1 psi or 0 0.07 bar. That is the minimum pressure to open the start opening, uh, starting opening the check valve. The minimum pressure drop is needed to maintain the open position of the closure element without failing. If the pressure drop falls to less than 1 psi, the closure element will float back and forth which is commonly called flutter. As the disc moves toward the seat, the opening narrows and pressure rebuilds which causes the disc to open higher and the pressure is getting more. The maximum pressure drop is approximately 10 psi or 0.7 bar depending on the size of the check wall. Higher pressure drop lead to severe erosion of the check wall's closure element. Check wall manufacturers provide cracking pressure of their check walls. The cracking pressure is the minimum pressure required to open the check wall and is a fixed number associated with the style and size of the check wall. So, these are the informations available on check wall. The cracking pressure can be important if the valve is installed in a vertical line. Whether the check wall must be opened against gravitational force in addition to the process pressure. So, that is important in vertical line. Similar lines have higher cracking pressures than larger lines. This is because the larger, larger the line, the larger the process force must be against the components mass in the check valves. So, these are the information of check valve. So, another important valve we have to discuss on valve criteria, valve sizing criteria on throttling valves. Let us see that. Throttling valves require a systematic method of determining the required flow through the valve as well as the size of the valve body, the body stain and the materials that can accommodate or tolerate the process conditions, the corrected pressure rating and the proper installed flow characteristics. Lot of important informations are there like that one. See, as well as the size of the valve body, body style, material that can accommodate process condition, correct pressure rating and proper installed flow characteristics. The industry standard of determining the flow capacity of a throttling valve is NSI or ISA standard 575.01 which contains the equation required to predict the flow, in, flow of incompressible fluid or compressible gas uh, process, uh, process, uh, compressible process fluid. I, that means either liquid or gas.
proper selection of the valve is based on the service condition of the process earlier in the previous slide also discussed. For correct sizing, the following conditions are needed for uh, valve sizing criteria for throttling valves. What are that? One is upstream pressure, the upstream pressure and the maximum and the minimum temperature. The type of process fluid. The flow rate that is based on, that is based upon the maximum flow rate. The average flow rate and the minimum flow rate vapor pressure, pipeline size, schedule and material. The maximum, average and minimum pressure drop, specific gravity of the fluid and the critical pressure. So, these are the important uh, information or factors affecting on the valve sizing on throttling valves. Some of the equations are here. But uh, not all equation, I did not add all equation that one. Uh, uh, I have covered in this module general information, some of the important and the general information only. Did not cover all the equations. So, some of the valve sizing nomenclatures, uh, some of the various uh, uh, information or factors are uh, uh, affecting on valve sizing criteria. We have added that. Uh, let us see that one, some of the important informations uh, uh, one is upstream and downstream pressure definitely it will uh, affect the performance or uh, valve sizing criteria in process system most valves are designed to either pass or restrict the flow to some extent in order to the process to flow in a particular direction through a valve the upstream and downstream pressures must be different otherwise the pressure would be equal to equal and no flow would occur. So, minimum pressure drop is required to maintain a fair flow. By definition, the upstream pressure is the pressure reading taken before the valve, while the downstream pressure is the <coughs> pressure reading taken after the valve. Next uh, important information is the pressure drop, important factors affecting our uh, valve sizing criteria. The resulting pressure between upstream and downstream pressure is called pressure drop or the pressure differential. The pressure drop allows for the flow of the fluid through the process system <coughs> from the upstream side of the wall to downstream side. In theory, the greater the pressure drop, the greater the flow through the wall. Next is flow capacity. The most commonly applied sizing coefficient is known as valve coefficient CV, <coughs> which is defined as 1 US gallon or 3.8 liters at 60 degree Fahrenheit water that flows through a valve 1 psi of pressure drop. These are the CV definition. The general equation is written in several ways, but two of the most methods are common methods are. CV equal to Q root of SG divided by delta P. <coughs> so, other is also there. One more equation is there. CV is equal to Q by root of delta P by SG is another equation. Both the common equation is using for finding CV, where CV is the required flow coefficient of the wall. Uh, Q is the flow rate in gallons per minute. SG is the specific gravity of the fluid. DP is the pressure drop in PSI. <coughs> when uh, calculated properly, CV determines the correct size or area of the valve restriction that will allow the valve to pass the required flow while allowing stable control of the process throughout the stroke of the valve. So, <coughs> to calculate the CV is very important. <coughs> Actual pressure drop is another important point to discuss. Another term for pressure drop, actual pressure drop DP is defined as the difference between upstream and downstream pressure. When the chalked and actual pressure drops are combined and the actual pressure drop is smaller, it is used in the CV sizing equation. Chalked pressure drop also. As CV is uh, equation is examined, the assumption is made that the, if the pressure drop is increased, the flow should increase 
proportionately a point exists however where the further uh, where further increases in the pressure drop will not change the valve flow rate this is uh, what is commonly called choked flow Reynolds number factor is also another important information or factors affecting uh, valve criteria, valve sizing criteria. So it will decide that whether the flow will be turbulent laminar or turbulent region. Some processes are characterized by non-turbulent flow condition in which laminar flow exists such as oils. Laminar fluids have high viscosity, operate in lower velocities or require a flow capacity requirement that is extremely small. The Reynolds number factor FR is used to correct CV equation in these flow factors. So that is also important. Some other important valve sizing nomenclatures are, I did not add that in definition or detail information, some information uh, whenever you need more that one you can read it from the valve handbook. Allowable pressure drop, incipient and advanced cavitation, flashing issues, liquid pressure recovery factor, liquid critical pressure ratio factor, choked flow and velocity etc etc. These informations are also affecting valve sizing criteria. One more valve I have to discuss before we ending pressure relief valve sizing some information on that one. The proper sizing of a pressure relief valve involves determining the size of the valve itself as well as the calculating the pressure loss in the inlet pipeline and back pressure in the downstream piping. Sizing also should determine the discharge reactive force. In simple terms, the basic formula of sizing pressure relief valve is A is equal to W by B K G, where A is the flow rate of the pressure relief valve, W is the required mass flow rate, B is the sizing constant, K is equal to coefficient of discharge, G is equal to mass flux. To accurately find the mass flow rate and appropriate, appropriate size of the pressure relief valve, each of these variables must be determined using appropriate equations. As with the throttling valve sizing, some key differences exit between the gas and liquid size equation. So, each of the previous these parameters have to find using specific equation. Then we have to suitable find a solution for that one. As the throttling valve sizing, here also the gas equation uh, using uh, relief valve for gas and uh, uh, sorry safety valve for gas and relief valve for liquid is a different sizing equation we are using. The coefficient of discharge K is a ration uh, of uh, experimental flow of theoretical flow uh, provided by a certified manufacturer. So it is a, a mistake here. K is an experimental uh, is a constant for uh, experimental flow to theoretical flow. The sizing constant is a fixed number that is used depending on the numerical system used metric or imperial unit. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, we will definitely continue our effort to, to take one more video from one or two video from valve to before going to finish the valve module. Thanks for watching this video. Have a good day.